Um, I, yeah, okay. Helium is the most quantum liquid. It doesn't solidify as one decrease the temperature to zero. Instead, helium would go to a phase called superfluid. Uh, the phase diagram of helium looks almost like a phase diagram of usual liquid in the sense that it has a liquid uh, and a gas. And the phase transition between these two phases is a first order phase transition that ends with a critical point. Um, the difference is that at low temperature, it's a superfluid. Uh, at least at low pressure, if one increase the pressure, one would get into a solid phase. Um, if one increase the pressure further, presumably one goes to more and more some other so uh, solid uh, phases and possibly even uh, some exotic phases, for example, a phase where the nuclei of the helium condenses, uh, nuclei condense into a both condensate um, but uh, for the, the purpose of this talk, I'm going to concentrate my attention on the lower pressure region of the phase diagram in which we have three phases, um, the superfluid phase, the liquid phase, and the gas phase. And the, strictly speaking, the liquid phase and the gas phase do not distinguish uh, from an, uh, one from the other because we can go continuously from one phase to the other. The temperature scale uh, that we will be uh, thinking about here are all of the order of Kelvin. Uh, the liquid gas critical point happen at temperature about 5.2 Kelvin and pressure about two atmosphere, while the uh, uh, phase transition between a superfluid and a liquid, normal liquid, happen at temperature about 2.2 Kelvin, which depends uh, quite weakly on the pressure. why helium is quantum. The reason for that is twofold. First of all, the nuclei, the mass of the, uh, of the uh, helium atom is small and that leads to large quantum fluctuations of the position of the helium atom. And secondly, the uh, interaction potential between two helium uh, atoms, um, as we will see, is also quite weak. Uh, the depth of the potential is small. Uh, the potential can be uh, approximated by a Leonard Jones potential, which has uh, uh, Van der Waals tail, one over R to the six, uh, attractive tail, and a repulsive core. Uh, and the size of the core is parameterized by this parameter sigma. Um, in this, um, uh, when one think about the, uh, how to characterize the magnitude of the quantum effect in helium, one introduces the so-called de Boer parameter, which basically tell us, um, there are various ways to understand this uh, de Boer parameter. One way to think about that is try to put, to try to arrange the helium atom in the lattice uh, with the lattice uh, uh, site equal to the position of the minimum of the potential and ask the question about the magnitude of the quantum fluctuations of the position. And one will see that if uh, this, um, the, the magnitude of this fluctuation is proportional to this parameter lambda. And if lambda is very small, one would have a classical liquid or solid. Uh, most of the substances in nature have lambda much smaller than one, except for helium, you will see that lambda is um, of order one. So for example, one take a table from any textbook in uh, physical chemistry, for, the, for example, this one. We see a table where people uh, list the uh, Leonard Jones parameter of potential between two molecules. So here helium and hydrogen, for example, as uh, we, um, as I've uh, advertised, the depth of the potential for helium is very small compared to all the other cases, in particular hydrogen. And so even hydrogen molecule is much light, is lighter than, the, uh, the, than helium. The quantumness of a collection of hydrogen molecules uh, has, is, um, is less than that of the helium. The de Boer parameter of, for helium is about 0 0.4, where for hydrogen is 0 0.2. And so 
hydrogen form a solid at low temperature while helium remains uh, a liquid. Now let us imagine that we can uh, make helium more quantum. Imagine that one can lower the mass of the helium nucleus. So make it instead of four atomic unit, mass unit, make it uh, three, two, etc. And one can ask the question, what would happen? What would happen to the phase diagram of helium? If one uh, has a heavy nucleus, if the nucleus is still much more heavy than the electrons, one can use the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. In that approximation, the potential energy, the potential between two atoms um, is still, uh, is unchanged. unchanged. It's not um, in the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, one just solved the equation, the Schrodinger equation for the, for the atoms in the field of two nuclei. So the potential energy between the two nuclei, effective potential remain unchanged. So the effect of that, of lowering the mass of the nucleus is to make the system more quantum. Okay. Now we know that uh, helium-4 doesn't solidify at uh, low, um, low uh, at, at zero, uh, at zero uh, uh, temperature. And so it's clear that if we make the nucleus lighter, um, the, this new lighter isotope of helium would not solidify. It would be still be a liquid down to zero temperature. But what happened to the rest of the phase diagram? Let's ask about the um, uh, behavior of the uh, superfluid phase transition temperature, TC, the phase transition between superfluid and the liquid as one change changes M. To the very uh, rough approximation, one can think about that superfluid phase transition as the BEC transition. And there is a formula in all textbooks in statistical mechanics, which says that TC of a, uh, of a, uh, of a non-interacting Bose gas is equal to N to the power of 230 divided by M. One can get this formula by comparing the, the thermal wavelength of the particle with the distance between the particle and its neighbor. So if one in decreases M, then TC should increase. Instead of 2 by 2, 2.2 2 degree, the temperature must increase as M drops below 4. Another question one can ask is what happened to the critical temperature of the liquid gas phase transition? And here there are data. Uh, of lighter elements, for example, neons, which says that this temperature decreases with the, uh, with the um, nuclear mass. The isotopes, the lighter isotope of neon has a lower critical temperature than the uh, heavier isotope. And now, now what happened here is that SO1 decrease, decreases the mass of the nucleus, that line, that separates superfluid to liquid moves to the right, while the temperature of the liquid gas critical point moves to the left. At some point they would meet each other and one can ask what would happen. The simplest uh, picture would be something like this. The, the liquid gas phase transition move all the way uh, to the left and the other, so that it would now be on the line of the, um, uh, of, of the superfluid phase transition. So that is a very interesting possibility because now we have two phase transition happening at the same point. We would have a tricritical, uh, multi-critical point, but I will show that this scenario is, in, is impossible. So suppose that uh, is possible that is at some value of the mass of the nucleus, one would have a, a critical point where both the superfluid phase transition and the liquid gas phase transition happens at the same time. This situation in statistical mechanics is called a multi-critical point. It's a critical point of many uh, order parameters. And one can treat that uh, phase transition using 
ordinary technique of uh, starting from the um, Landau theory and then uh, build up uh, uh, um, um, uh, fluctuations and renormalization group, etc. So here we would start with the Landau theory that contains the uh, on the second line here. Let's start with that. Um, uh, psi square and psi to the fourth, that is the Landau potential for the superfluid order parameter, which has a U1 symmetry. Uh, on the first line, we have a description of a liquid gas free transition, which uh, at the critical point uh, belong to the Ising universality class. Um, it is described by a real order parameter phi. Uh, which is basically the density that distinguishes the liquid and the gas phases, uh, phi square, phi to the fourth, and phi. Uh, there is no Z2 symmetry the, uh, in the uh, problem. So the uh, Z2 symmetry at the critical point is an emergent symmetry that we have to fine tune to. And we fine tune uh, two parameter T and H here to reach that point. In the in usual liquid, what we would tune is the temperature, is the pressure that would correspond in the Ising model to the temperature in the magnetic field. Now we have these two other parameters coupled to each other and one can write down the coupling between them. So we have alpha phi psi square, gamma phi square psi square if one limits ourselves to terms to fourth order in the fields and, um, is, uh, and, and, uh, and respect the U1 symmetry, which is the true symmetry of the problem. Now one can observe that um, that multi-critical point has at least four relevant symmetric, uh, um, E1 symmetric relevant uh, deformation. So these are here. In the mean field theory, it's very easy to see. These are the coefficient of phi square, coefficient of psi square, uh, the magnetic, this magnetic field that act on phi and the coefficient of phi psi square. In fact, one can uh, extend this analysis to beyond mean field and check that any, that all uh, um, fixed point which have Z2 cross U1 symmetry uh, ha um, have more than, more than three relevant uh, deformation. But we can tune only three parameters, pressure, temperature, and the mass of the nucleus. That means that Typically, we will miss that multi-critical point. We will not be able to tune to that point. Something, we will, something will happen before we get to that point. And the question is, what happened? To get some suggestions, uh, rough suggestion, some idea of what may happen, let us take this mean field theory at face value and investigate it um, numerically. So here is the Landau uh, theory, Landau potential that couple the liquid gas order parameter with the uh, U1 superfluid order parameter with this coupling phi psi square. For simplicity, I omit the phi square psi square, which I hope will not change a lot of things qualitatively. So we do we did some numerics. Uh, the the uh, parameter here, which we call M tilde, uh, can be thought of as the mass of that atoms. Uh, T could be thought of some kind of temperature and H is pressure. Very roughly in the real world, of course, uh, the, uh, all these three parameters are combination of M tilde, T and H. So for a large value of M tilde, that mass of the nucleus, roughly speaking, we see in mean field theory, a phase diagram very similar to the phase diagram of helium. You see here on two uh, sides here, the, um, uh, the density phi, the uh, liquid gas order parameter, and here is the square of the superfluid order parameter. Think about that as some, uh, some superfluid uh, fraction or um, some order parameter. So here what you see is that uh, there is a line of second order phase transition that separate the superfluid phase where psi square is equal to something non-zero to psi equal to zero. And there is a line of first order phase transition that separate the superfluid with the gas and superfluid with the, uh, and the liquid 
with the gas. So the separation between liquid and gas is not seen in this the second uh, plot here, but it's seen in the plot for the density. The f we get the phase diagram of helium. And now let's try to lower the mass. When we lower the mass, something interesting happened. Here, the phase transition between a superfluid and the liquid is not purely a second order phase transition. Actually, it developed a first order piece, terminating at the tricritical point and then continue as a second order phase transition. And so what happened here is that as you lower the mass, uh, some of the topology of the phase diagram change a little bit in the sense that part of what used to be dotted line denoting second order phase transition becomes first order. One can actually um, argue that this, uh, one can try to explain what is the origin of that, uh, that the system tried to develop a first order phase transition. The reason is the following. Um, let me show you uh, why it is quite natural to expect. In the Landau theory, we have the U1 order parameter characterized by psi square, um, psi to the fourth. So I write here the psi to the fourth term. But there is also a coupling between psi square and the fluctuation of the liquid gas order parameter, which is here delta phi, the fluctuation of the density. So that fluctuation of the density has some um, quadratic terms, which uh, is the, um, whose coefficient is the, um, the, the, um, the susceptibility. So when we integrate out this fluctuation of the uh, liquid gas order parameter or the density we generate a contribution to side to the fourth term proportional to that um, to that um, susceptibility. And if the, we are very close to the uh, liquid gas at a critical point, the susceptibility goes to infinity, which induces a negative side to the fourth uh, contribution. And if in the Landau theory, we know that if the coefficient of side to the fourth term is negative, we cannot have a, 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 um, a second order phase condition. What happened instead is that as the system has these two point, these two phase transition approach each other, uh, part of the uh, uh, phase transition line between superfluid and liquid becomes first order. And this tricritical point moves up uh, as uh, one moves, uh, uh, one lowers the mass. So using this, um, uh, we can, uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, field theory, we can go to lower m tilde, supposed to be lower value of the mass of the nucleus. At some point, m tilde equal minus one. We see a diagram which looks even simpler than that. We have a superfluid and a gas. There is no critical point anymore. So what happened is that the phase diagram of this type uh, transform uh, this critical point move toward the phase transition uh, between superfluid and a normal phase and completely disappears under that phase transition. And as a result, we get this, uh, this phase diagram. So to, summary, to summarize, uh, the, in, the, in the mean field theory, we see uh, transformation of the phase diagram, which start with the phase diagram of helium, uh, go through a more complicated phase diagram where we have a tricritical point, and then again it goes to a slightly low, uh, simpler phase diagram where there is only one line super, uh, separating a superfluid and the gas with a tri tricritical point. Of course, we have to take this um, mean field result with a grain of salt. It is only a suggestion of what can happen. In particular, the mean field theory doesn't tell at, at which mass of the helium nucleus. Uh, we go from one type of the diagram to the other. And in general, it doesn't even give us what kind of range of, the, uh, of M. Should we go to very small M, like 1,000th of the mass of the helium to get to that, or only a tenth? Let me give you uh, uh, an argument saying that uh, this transformation happened in a rather narrow range of the mass of the helium nucleus. And the reason for that is that we know that there is something called the, un we, we 
something called unbinding phase transition. The unbinding phase transition happens when the, uh, the, um, the, the fluid, the, the liquid state, no longer is no longer uh, stable at zero pressure. There is no self-bound liquid at zero pressure. And Swerker in 2019 uh, uh, showed that this self-bound liquid disappeared when the scattering length crosses zero and the vicinity of this point can be reliably studied. I will explain to you a little bit later. So basically this self-unbinding phase transition happened when this tricritical point moves down and then goes to zero. And when it approaches zero at that point, uh, there is no distinction between superfluid and gas. In particular, at zero temperature, the, um, there is no finite density uh, superfluid. So what, how we can see that, you can see that by thinking about the energy of a, um, of, um, of a system of particle with number density n. n here is how many uh, particles in a unit volume. And the free energy of such a system uh, can be expanded in power of n. There is n squared term due to the pairwise interaction between the particle and cube term due to the three body interaction. And there is this mu n is transforming from energy to free energy at zero temperature. We know that this coefficient g here is proportional to the scattering length that characterizes the uh, interaction at low energies of two particles. So if this scattering length is negative, uh, then the system wants to lower the energy by uh, increasing n, increasing density, until the three-body interaction kicks in. So if this three-body interaction coefficient g or d here, uh, which has been called three-body scattering hypervolume by Shinatan, um, if this d is positive, then we have a um, self-bound liquid with a density equal to the ratio of this coefficient g and this coefficient uh, capital G. The phase transition happens when this co coefficient g crosses zero. Near that phase transition, every, everything is calculable. So in helium, we know roughly the potential between the helium atoms and we can calculate, just by solving the Schrodinger equation, what is the scattering length between two helium atoms. And uh, when the mass is close to four, close to the physical mass, the scattering length goes through a, a pole, crosses infinity. Uh, and then it becomes negative and it becomes positive at M around 1.55 atomic unit. So that means that all this phase transition all these transformations from of the phase diagram that I show you here happens in a rather narrow range of mass between here four atomic unit to here the mass is about 1.55, which is lower than 1.55, this tricritical point disappears and goes to zero. Okay, so let's, uh, let me uh, now speculate on possible realizations of such a system. Unfortunately, we don't have an isotope of helium, which is boson, which has a bosonic nucleus and lighter than helium-4. Helium-3 is lighter, but it's fermionic. The phase diagram of helium-3 is very different from what I described here. We have helium-6 and helium-8. Uh, these are uh, in contrast to expectation, quite stable isotope. Uh, they live, uh, the lifetime is about one second and 0 0.1 second, but I couldn't find any, um, in, I couldn't find in the literature even the phase diagram of this uh, isotope. But in any case, they are not what we are looking for. We are looking for something that is more quantum than helium-4. So there is a very uh, interesting uh, article by John Wheeler written in 1988 at the first ship for Edward Taylor. Uh, when he um, imagined a situation in which one, replace, one replaces all the electrons in a substance with muons. So here is the person made out of nuclei and electrons and once he replaced all the electrons with muon, his side would shrink by the factor of 207. 
which is the mass ratio between muon and, and electrons. And one can, um, one can argue, one can um, very easily convince ourselves that by making um, atoms made out of, uh, of, of muons, one increases the strength of quantum effect. In particular, if I introduce something called, uh, that I would call the effective helium mass, that would be the helium, ma the mass of the isotope of helium that has the same de Boer parameter as a given substance, Replacing electron by muon would reduce that effective helium mass by 207 times, or in other words, increase this de Boer parameter by a factor of 207 times. So, for example, if I take argon, which is which is very um, very classical, the effective it effectively it's as classical as helium with uh, the isotope of 800 of helium. When I replace the electrons by muon, it becomes a, a helium-4, basically. And playing with other substances, we can get very interesting uh, hypothetical quantum liquids of, for example, muonic uh, nitrogen. That would be quite quantum. It can be a superfluid. We have nitrogen made out of nuclei and, uh, and muons that would, can be a superfluid. Um, with a superfluid uh, transition temperature of about a few thousand Kelvin. Another possibility is to take hydrogen, which we have seen is quite classical, and replace the nuclei by, by some uh, particle lighter than proton. So for example, I can try to replace it with muons or pions. And it turned out that uh, if one uh, do the calculation of the scattering length, one can see that um, uh, muons a liquid made out of muoniums, which are the uh, molecules where one replaces uh, protons with muons. Uh, chemists even have a name for that molecule, called muonium. Muonium is not self-bound, but, but for pions, the, the liquid is self-bound. Um, these liquids live uh, quite uh, short times. Uh, the lifetime is about uh, 10.6. Um, microsecond, two microsecond for uh, muons. The lifetime of pion and pions are even shorter, about 10 minus 8 seconds. But these, like, these, these lifetimes are still large compared to, for example, the, any atomic uh, time scale. So in principle, one can imagine such a, one can imagine a droplet of, 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 of pions and electrons, for example, living uh, for, a, for a short time. Perhaps uh, you know, more realistically, one can think about biexitons in solid. So imagine a solid in which we have a whole mass, a whole holds an electron with some, re re some uh, ratio of the whole mass to electron mass of about a few hundred. Um, and if one have um, 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 isotropic dispersion relations for both the electrons and holes, then one can imagine making uh, molecules out of holes in electrons, like a hydrogen molecule, and then condense them in the Bose-Einstein condensate, uh, or make a liquid and try to investigate the phase diagram of the liquid. And it may look like one of these phase diagrams that I have shown you in the um, uh, in one of the previous transparencies. In particular, one can have a phase diagram similar to that of helium. So oh, yeah. let me conclude. Yeah. Um, there are interesting possibilities for liquids which are in some sense more quantum than helium in the sense that these, uh, the uh, de Boer parameters characterizing um, how big the quantum effects are in the liquid um, compared to helium. Interesting, one interesting thing is about this uh, exercise is that these, these liquids can be simulated by quantum Monte Carlo. Um, and um, that's because Bosons, interacting bosons have no sign problem when you can put them in the computer. And with uh, Massimo Bumiseni, Josef Kora, and Shi, Shi Wei Zhang, um, uh, we are trying to look at the phase diagram of different uh, hypothetical isotope of helium. Um, one can think about 2D system and ask what happened to 
is there a way to um, make the um, BKT phase transition a system where we have both BKT phase transition and a liquid gas phase transition and I can try to understand the interplay between them. Um, I have presented to you some science fiction realization, which I do not expect to be realized very soon. Uh, but um, one might hope that with cold atoms, uh, one can uh, try, one can be, one may be able to make um, make um, similar type of liquid. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Son, for a very interesting talk. Um, so now we, are, we have a few minutes for questions and I see a few questions on the, uh, which I can read out um, and then we can uh, turn to any other questions um, panelists may have as well. Uh, so one of the questions from Joshua Heath um, is, uh, thanks for the nice talk. How do you think the phase diagram of helium-3 uh, would change as we decrease the mass? Could an ultra-quantum fermionic fluid uh, be easier or harder to realize experimentally? Well, helium-3, I think at, um, at some point will become unbound as one decreases the mass. I don't know what is the value of the mass where it becomes unbound. Um, I, I have um, I haven't thought about what um, happens, for example, what would happen to other part of the phase diagram, like um, um, like the um, superfluid phase transition. Presumably, it might it might even disappear because that um, that temperature is very low and relies on certain coefficients in the BCS interaction being negative. I, I don't have a good answer to your question, in short. Mm -hmm. um, so there's another question, which is, how did you do the minimization of the free energy? Was it just um, this mean field minimization of the free energy for the numerics? It's, uh, it's basically that, yeah. It's the, 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 the model that we choose is, um, is even simpler because um, we have, when we, um, when we uh, neglect the phi squared term, phi squared psi squared term, we can integrate our phi. Uh, I'm sorry, we can integrate our psi and then get an effective potential for mm -hmm. phi, which we minimize on Mathematica. Mm -hmm. All right, um, there are two more questions. Um, so Luca Delacretz, De uh, De uh, question is, is the university class for the blue tricritical point uh, known? Is the um, universality the universality class of the tricritical point is um, just um, so the, at, at finite temperature um, the theory describing um, the um, um, the theory describing the vicinity of this point is a three dimensional phi to the six theory so just uh, phi to the six with fine-tuned uh, um, mass m square phi square and a fine-tuned lambda to the phi to the fourth. Both phi square and phi to the fourth coefficient has to go to zero. And phi is a complex scalar, I guess. Phi is a complex scalar, yeah. Yeah, there's and one more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and there's one more question. Um, so from Kyle Kawago, you mentioned there's a point in the in parameter space where the PT phase diagram of helium changes dramatically. At that point, does anything interesting happen near the tricritical point? I'm not sure which uh, which point of which. What is the um, question is about which? Uh, I suspect it's when you first get the first order transition as you lower the mass. Uh, um, nothing um, have to uh, happen with this point. Um, nothing mm -hmm. has to happen with this point. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let me go to one more. Stephen Rowley, um, uh, just making an observation, maybe it's more a comment than a, 
a question. It's uh, just an observation that a very similar quantum field theory model coupling strain to polarization uh, leads to a similar phase diagram for quantum critical ferroelectrics uh, with tricritical points. Maybe there's a, there's a scope to study some ideas experimentally in that area. Um, so that's, I guess, comment. Uh, there's another question by Jin Cheng Zhang. Um, uh, in tricritical points, are there any interesting effects in the topological defects? The tricritical point is pretty um, um, simple. Um, five to the six uh, in three D. Five to the six uh, runs uh, the, uh, the, the the coefficient runs logarithmically. So I would imagine that the defect, like superfluid vortex near that point, would be described by to, in a group approximation by a mean field um, uh, mean field. And so, um, so presumably one can study that. I haven't studied the uh, defect mm -hmm. near that point. So I see that Leo Radziechowski has his hand raised. Leo, do you want to go ahead and ask a question? Well, just it's more, uh, yeah. I, I guess I was, I'm surprised there's, maybe it's just an artifact of mean field theory, but there's no, when phi undergoes a discontinuous jump across some of the early, you know, earlier first order transitions, there's no, there should be some effect on psi since phi couples to it uh, linearly. You know, there's it does, yeah, there is. Jump. Uh, mm -hmm. So for example, here you see a jump in phi and here you see a jump in phi. That is- uh, I guess maybe exactly. if you go back one, one back maybe. Yeah, like here. Uh, yeah, the jump here is everywhere is zero. And so the jump, uh, the jump in phi here is associated with jump in phi, right? Um, but here it says this, this first order phase transition um, happens when the system is completely normal. And so there is no jump in uh, the superfluid order parameter. So it's just a uh, normal, the usual gas liquid phase transition without any superfluid order but it parameter. Could take, it could take psi above below the transition if phi jumps enough, right? So if phi jump enough, then you would get this, um, this, um, this, this, yeah, you would be here. Right. Yeah, so that is what happened here. Okay. Yeah, okay, in the new field theory, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, I think, um, uh, 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 I have a question, sorry. Oh, should I? Go ahead, it, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, ahead. sorry, I should have. So, so, so there are these systems called ferrofluids where particles can move around like in a liquid, but they also carry a spin on top of mm -hmm. that. So I was wondering, um, is it possible to maybe rely some of this physics in, in, in those, uh, just imagine like you might, might have seen those videos of take oil and, and, and disperse like iron particles in it. So I was wondering, so they also have this transition from liquid to, so in that surface volume looks like high temperature ga gas, then you get liquid. And then you load it on bigger further, liquid becomes actually a, um, a, 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 a magnetized while remaining liquid and eventually it becomes solid. So mm -hmm. there's this might have, there's a lot of work by, by Michael Fisher on this. So I was wondering is there, because that doesn't require any BEC, but it still has an order parameter, which is can be O2, can be O3 and so on. Um, is there such a, can, is there something along those lines can be? Study, do you think, or is it? Is there, is there, do you see similarities? Uh, I haven't studied that. Um, so you, you're saying that it could could it be something that um, more similar to what we you were right. trying to get. Right. Basically, the um, it's um, kind of a O3. Hmm. I don't know. But but in the whole, even the other phase diagrams we were showing, where the, this this idea that you have. Um, basically, you have three kind of, I mean, phases: gas, liquid, and a, and a, and a superfluid. I was wondering. I mean, ferrofluid has somewhat similar phase diagram. It has a gas, and a liquid, and a ferrofluid. Mm -hmm. So all these questions seem like I don't know. Maybe I'm completely off, but it seemed like they have some analog there. 
-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't thought about that, but okay, no very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we're out of time.